Hello watchers. I have the dish set up. I wisened up. I have the dish set up. The little chickies, that squash. That's the remnants of the squash I cooked yesterday or possibly the day before. There's a big chunk of squash. This is all cooked for them. Well, the squash is. Mealy worms and there's some chicken crumbles. So they'll have a buffet when they first get out. Now it's November third let me show you I'm gonna jiggle the thingy here a little bit see if I can you see that there's it's a squirrel or chipmunk up there looks kind of dark here but anyway I was making noise earlier anyway so it's November 3rd Sunday November 3rd 2024 it's Five, let me see, about five degrees Celsius is 40 degrees out. Time change was yesterday. Well, technically, I think it was this morning, like one o'clock in the morning. And so we are going to let the chickens out. And she's ready. She says, you're an hour behind. Look at her. There she goes. And there's the chickies, right ready. They're like, we're hungry. Look at them. She still scratches. If you notice, she still scratches, even though the food's right there. It's just part of her nature, part of chicken nature to do that. That's how they survived for all these years, centuries. And it seems like she's still wanting to feed them. You know, it looks like they can... Deal with it themselves. Let's see, they didn't do much over there. I guess they prefer scratching around. They're just eating out of a bowl like a cat or a dog. And probably like, eh, we're not typical domesticated pets. They like the mealy worms. They like the squash. I'm surprised they like the squash. I I haven't noticed that chickens like squash that much. I thought it was typically corn first, tomato second. But maybe uh, maybe it's just because I haven't really tried squash for my chickens. I don't know. I remember at one time putting an ad out on the local bulletin board, Market House bulletin board, years and years ago when I had like 70 chickens and I would advertise that I was looking for people's Halloween leftovers of pumpkins and because I was going to give them to my chickens and it did it seemed that the chickens just really weren't that interested maybe if I cooked it maybe they would have been more interested Banties and them other ones back when I was giving them pumpkin, leftover pumpkins, them were heavy breeds. So, heavy breed are more domesticated, so maybe that's what it was. The more domesticated, maybe the natural instinct for pumpkins is just brought out of them. And then over here. There's Henrietta, of course, she's a Seabright hen. She's a Banty. And that's the mother. The father is over here, Mil Milfler Dockle. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Never heard anybody say it, just seen it in writing. He's the father. Now, Henrietta naturally hatched her chickens, her chicks. And I believe they're both pullets because I don't see any... Uh, crown on them. Any, what do you call that? Ah, uh, words are escaping me. Any of the little thingies on top. The waddle or whatever you call that. And so I thought, you know, I forgot to show you the other day what I did for this. Or maybe I didn't. I just don't remember I did. But I've insulated the chicken coop. Now this stays insulated the whole year. It'll be silly to take it down in summer to put it back up in winter because it's a hard job 
if you if you recognize you know if you looked if you remember the look of the coop itself I have to actually squeeze in here upside down to do this to insulate this so it's a tough job to do squeezing in and out of here but these are um, carpet I think I did show you this several days ago uh, these are uh, carpet paddings that I got out of people's garbage a lot of it smelled like smoke, or smokers, and um, so I had to leave it out on the, I got a clothesline, and I just left it on the clothesline for probably a few weeks to get the smell of smoke out, and I think the rain rained on it and washed some of it out and aired it out after, air dried it out after that, but the whole thing, if you look, it's mostly carpet padding. I think there's some... Oh yeah, I, do. I have carpet squares on there. But that's the whole side. All sides have either... Well, that, that over there is a carpet square. I got these little carpet square remnants from a defunct carpet store here in Hudson. Somebody gave the carpet squares free. This, I don't think is an, what you're looking at right now, I don't think that was an actual square. I think maybe that might have been a carpet remnant. But either way, it's all hot glued on here. I tried other things and hot glue worked the best. I didn't want to do any permanent damage to the structure. So it's all hot glue. But it takes a lot of hot glue to get it to stay. And I do occasionally have to re-hot glue some spots because they'll start coming off. But that right back there is carpet remnant back there. If you see that, that was a toughie. I had to hot glue the Hades out of it and clamp it for like a day to get that to mold to the nesty boxes there. And over here I have, of course, um, carpet remnant. I had to clamp it too. This is packing box material that's just for insulation, more insulation. They don't, I only have the two grown hens or chickens and the two pullets right now. So they don't need all these. And they weren't using these over here on the side. So I just stuffed some box boxing material in there to give it just more insulation. Uh, let me see. I'll get up. It's, and there's the heat lamp. I use a ceramic heat bulb. We used to use one of them red bulbs. That scares the crap out of me. We invested in a couple of these ceramic bulbs. It is on a thermostat that turns this on. This is a weatherproof cord that runs from the coop to the plug in the shed. And the thermostat turns it on. I believe it turns it on at 32 degrees and shuts off at 50. But this is outdoor grade cord. We have another one for, you know, when we think this one might be giving up the ghost. I got the insulation around the edges here. Um, if you notice, it goes to a certain spot. That's because when I close it, I got the insulation down here. And if I have it down here, it makes this stick out. So I had to cut that and so it, it has room to give for this insulation down here. And this is, as I told you before, from greenchickencoops.com. They're now defunct. Uh, they did tile the bottom. And I put padding and I put water softener bags and come out when I clean. I you know, replace the water. This is so, you know, waterproof. It won't pull up the tiles, hopefully. And I pull them up when I clean, clean out the coop, too. Um, you know, and replace them with new ones. So the tile, then the carpet padding, then the plastic bags, then the cardboard, and in the winter time, it's the hay. Okay, no, that hay will keep it warm in here. And I have a thermometer. Right now it says it's 44, well, no, 48 in there. 
I don't know how accurate this thermometer is. Anyway, so it is well insulated and it does work. Some of this needs a little repair. This was on here naturally, or I mean when we bought it, but it's coming apart, coming off. But that's the weather strip for the door to keep that, you know, keep air from getting in and escaping. When you close the door, of course they got the windows on this. Of course more padding here, more insulation that needs, yeah. So they got a they got a good thing going here. I used to put in a what do you call it? But well, that runs on a thermostat. But with the, you know, with the insulation and the heat bulb, I really don't need to. And that right there, if you notice, that's insulation wrapped around that. That's a nipple feeder or a nipple water. Best thing to invest in. Best thing I ever invested in. I bought like 20 for like five bucks off. Uh, the nipples themselves, not the feeders, but the nipples, you buy the nipples themselves and then you'll drill a hole in this, I believe, is a peanut butter jar, a plastic peanut butter jar. And then you put the nipple feeder in there. I think I either siliconed or hot glued it just to make sure it didn't leak off the, out the sides. You will get leakage, a little leakage like that. You see the water dripping from there. But it keeps the water so clean. No matter what I did, the chickens would, you know, in the scratching nature, would kick the straw and food in the water and would use the restroom in the water because they perch on the edge of the water. So this was the best thing I invested in. I put that insulation around there. It doesn't get warm enough. It's far enough from that heat lamp, if you see that. You've got, and it doesn't get that hot. That heat lamp just keeps it from, basically just from freezing, I guess. But um, yeah, you see you got like a whole hand length from the heater to where that water is. I got that S hook up there and then wrap this around there somehow I don't know but anyway so it, it's they got it pretty good in there the water last year only halfway froze one time and I just chopped it up a little bit with an ice pick or something I don't know a stick I had around here or something and it broke it up but other, you know it's never it's never frozen and it's so close to the heat lamp that I've never had any issues um, and there's flash so this is my setup oh and the carpet remnant on the top there you see that at the top I used to have it up here but I was thinking maybe I was insulating a little too much so I pulled that down it wasn't really staying anyways and I says you know let me just pull it down there so that's what I do for my chicken coop, chicken coop, and I know if you have any complaints about that heat lamp, because I know that's a, you know, that's a controversial topic. So you, you can leave it in the comments, please. But expect me to push back if you do that. But hey, your comments, good or bad, gets this bumped up in the algorithm. So thank you for watching this, and I'll check in with you tomorrow.